Hello, thank you so much for joining me this week. I hope you're doing fantastic. So, have you ever wanted to make some noise with your Arduino? Maybe you need a buzzer, or maybe you want some type of audible indicator when some type of input happens. Maybe you just want to make some cool music with an Arduino. Well, in today's episode, you're going to learn one way to do that using the tone function. So let's do an overview of exactly what we'll be talking about in this lesson. First thing we're going to do is talk about what you're going to need if you want to follow along with this tutorial, along with how to set up a simple piezo speaker circuit. Next, we're going to talk about the tone function. And this is going to be the bulk of our discussion. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the three parameters that it takes. Then we'll talk about the limitations of the tone function and just some other stuff that you're going to want to know when you're using the tone function. And finally, we're going to talk about how to masquerade as a DJ in a high-class dive bar. So if you want to follow along in this tutorial, you're going to need an Arduino board. I'm using an Arduino Uno. You'll also need a breadboard, two jumper wires, a 100 ohm resistor, a piezo speaker or piezo buzzer, and finally, you'll need at least 12 centimeters of dental floss with a thick wax coating. And you'll find if you can get the mint flavored, it will work best. Ah, noise. Birds make it. Kids make it. It can be music to our ears or pure torture. What we're going to be using is a piezo buzzer to make some noise with the Arduino using the tone function. Now, a piezo buzzer, it's actually pretty sweet. It's not like a regular speaker that you might think of, you know, one that might be in your car or used with your home television. It uses a material that's piezoelectric, and basically what that means is the stuff, piezoelectric stuff, it actually changes shape when you apply electricity to it. So a piezo buzzer is really just this piezoelectric material glued to a thin metal sheet and when you apply electricity to that piezoelectric material it bends the metal it you know turns it back and forth and that creates noise. Now the faster you bend the material the higher the pitch of the noise that's produced. So that rate, you know that rate at which you um, make those vibrations, that's the frequency. And again, the higher the frequency, the higher the pitch of the noise that we're going to hear. All right, so now let's go ahead and set up our circuit. So all you're going to do is take the piezo buzzer and place it into the breadboard so that the two leads are on separate rows. Now, piezo buzzer, it has two leads. So the case of the buzzer will likely have a little positive sign on it. And you are going to want to connect the positive lead to pin 8 on the Arduino. And the other lead, you'll connect to ground through the 100 ohm resistor. Well, that's it. Let's go ahead and jump into the Arduino sketch. So here we are in the Arduino IDE, and the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and set up the pin that I'll have my piezo speaker connected to. So I've just declared an integer, which I'm naming piezo pin. I've set it equal to the number 8 because I'm using digital pin 8 on my Arduino. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the setup pretty complicated setup. You can see I actually I don't have to put anything in this setup to go ahead and demonstrate the tone. So now let's go ahead and jump into the loop. So here we are in the loop and as you probably know the loop continuously repeats over and over. So all the code is going to get executed inside the loop and then when it gets to the bottom it's going to go ahead and start back up at the top, execute the code, do that over and over and over again. Okay, so here we are inside the loop. You can see from the comments, we can get Tone to work with two arguments. So the first argument is the pin number, and that's pretty straightforward. So I'm just using piezo pin. You can use any of the digital pins, and you can use any of the analog pins as long as you're using them as digital outputs. And then the next number is the frequency. Now the frequency is in hertz. So hertz just describes cycles per second. So one hertz would be one cycle per second. And 100 hertz would be 100 cycles per second. The way noise works, sound works, the way we experience sound in our eardrums is that the higher the frequency, the higher the pitch. The lower the frequency, the lower the pitch. Here I've got these two arguments and I'm ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and upload this to the board and let's just listen to the tone that it generates. Yep, that's pretty annoying. Alright, so hey, that's, that's 100. Let's try 1000. 
Okay, so you can see the higher the frequency, the higher that pitch. Well, let's try 10,000. Yeah, and I'm not even sure how well that will come over on your speakers. That's pretty high pitched. So that second value, that frequency value, is an unsigned integer. And so the value can be anywhere between 0 and 65,535. Now if you're trying to make tones for the sake of being able to hear them well, then frequencies between 2,000 and 5,000 are where humans are most sensitive. Now I'm not sure what it is for like androids or cyborgs, you'll have to look into that. But for humans, again, that ranges between 2,000 and 5,000. Now let's say I want to try to get a beat going. So I have the noise play and then I have it stop, I have it play and then I stop. So how might we do that? Well, let's try a delay. Now if you can hear the tone in the background, you can see that, you know, this delay isn't working at all. I'm going to go ahead and pause that sound before I lose my mind. Now, so why isn't this delay working? You can see that the tone is just playing continuously. Now the reason this is, is because the tone function uses a timer that's built into the Arduino. And the timer is actually separate, it's independent of the delay function. So you can start the tone and then you can go on and do other stuff while the tone is playing in the background. So the question kind of becomes, well, how do we separate the noise? How do we actually create distinct beats? Well, that's where that third parameter comes in that we can pass, and that's the duration of the tone. So the duration of the tone is defined in milliseconds. So let's go ahead and try this. So now if we look at our tone function, we're saying, all right, we want piezo pin, that's pin 8, 3000 is the frequency in hertz, and 500 is the length in milliseconds we want that tone to play. So let's go ahead and upload this and see what it sounds like. Okay, so we definitely have the noise pulsating now. It's coming on and it's turning off. It's coming on and it's turning off. I'm going to go ahead and stop the noise again. So you might have noticed that the delay in the beep sure didn't seem like a whole second or a thousand milliseconds. It seemed a lot shorter. In fact, it was 500 milliseconds shorter or half a second shorter. So why is that? Well, here's the deal. We just said before that the tone function uses one of the built-in timers on the Arduino. And that timer operates separately, independently, of the delay function. So if we think of our loop, we come down to the first line of code in the loop, it's the tone function, and you know we start the tone. So this tone starts playing. The next line of code we get to is the delay, and now a delay starts. So essentially, the tone starts and the delay starts at the same point in time. But that tone is able to continue for 500 milliseconds alongside, in parallel with, the delay that's occurring. So really the only delay we're getting is 500 milliseconds, and that's the amount of time that that tone ends after. So if we, if we were to increase this to, say, 900 and upload that, we can see the delay gets much smaller. And then if we increase it to 1,000, we see there's, it's almost an imperceivable delay. You can just kind of hear a click. So if you're trying to create a delay between the output, outputs of the tone function, then you're gonna wanna use, you're gonna wanna add that duration amount to your delay amount. So if we actually wanted a delay of one second, then we should take whatever value we have in duration, let's just make it 500, and we should add that value to the delay function. Let's go ahead and upload this and see if we can get a delay that sounds about a second. Mississippi. Mississippi. All right, well, hey, that sounds about a second. Okay, well, hey, that, that kind of makes sense. All right, well, working with the tone function, that's pretty much it. It's really not that hard. Again, you're just specifying a pin number, you're specifying the frequency, and then you're specifying a duration, if you so choose. And if you don't specify that duration, basically what you're doing is just turning a tone on and it's gonna stay on for infinity. Now, there are a couple limitations to the tone function that you wanna be aware of. First, if you try to use analog write on pins three or 11 at the same time that you use the tone function, you're gonna get some really wacky results. So neither the tone function nor the analog writing that you're trying to do at three or 11 is going to work as expected. And that's because the tone function uses the same built-in timer that analog write does for pins 3 and 11. But, you know, you should go ahead and try it. You're not going to do any damage, but you should give it a shot. It creates some really kind of interesting noises. 
So another limitation you should be aware of is that you can't generate a tone lower than 31 hertz. Now you can pass a number to the tone function that's less than 31, but according to the tone documentation, you're probably not gonna get the actual frequency of 31 hertz or less. And the last thing we'll mention is that if you're going to have two piezo speakers, each one on a different pin, you can't have them both playing at the same time. So the tone function can only be used by one pin at a time. Now, you can use it on separate pins, but you actually have to call a function called no tone. And what the no tone function does is it turns off the tone, essentially, on that previous pin. And then you can use the tone function on a new pin. And if you want to go back to that other pin, you have to call no tone again. Okay. Well, hey, let's do a quick review of what we talked about. We talked about piezo buzzer, piezo speaker. You know, basically it's just that material that bends with electricity and we're able to make noise with it. We talked about the tone function. We know it needs at least two arguments to operate, the pin number and the frequency in hertz, but it can also take a third argument, which is the duration, and that is in milliseconds. We talked about that the tone function, it works independently of the delay function. So the duration of the tone is gonna be continuous, if you don't use that third parameter of duration. And then finally, we talked about some of the lim limitations of the tone function, which include not being able to use the analog write on pins 3 and 11 while you're using tone. You can't guarantee the integrity of the frequency below 31 hertz. And when you're using tone on different pins, you have to make sure you use the no tone function before you try using tone on another pin. Well, hey, that's it for this week. I hope you found the tutorial helpful. If you like this tutorial, I welcome you to come check out our website and sign up. We've got a free 12-part course. You can come learn a lot about Arduino. We also offer a premium Arduino course. You can log on. It takes you through the gamut of learning all the stuff about Arduino, coding and electronics, that type of thing. Welcome you to also check that out. If you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We try to come out with this content on a weekly basis. I welcome you to join us next week where we'll be talking about using a piezo element as a knock sensor. All right. Hey, see you then. Bye.